Welcome Scorpio to your in-depth monthly forecast for March 2024 for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. Now there could be a huge slice of fortune right at the start of this month but also from the 22nd to the 27th. I can't wait to share that with you. Also, Venus and Mars, Mars your uh, traditional ruler, are both going to surge uh, into this into the part of your situation on the 11th and the 22nd respectively, which really can bring a spark to your social situation and perhaps even your love life. If you would like to ascend above this zodiac broadcast and understand what's going on in your personal astrology, based on your unique birth data. If you share with me your time, date and place or date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far and a much more intimate understanding of how to work with them and seize opportunities going forwards. In my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit forecast. This is an analysis of the moving planets in the sky and how they're interacting with your unique blueprint. So really exciting. Please see the link below. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored if you did so now. And also please feel very welcome to comment and interact with me. So Scorpio, as you make your way into this new month, so the Sun, Mercury, Saturn and Neptune are all in the fifth house. Fifth house is about social interaction. It can be about where we demonstrate our individuality. It can be very warm, affectionate, playful. It can be to do with children if you have them. But most of all, it can be where we just want to be radiant. The problem is having Saturn there can counter that desire for radiance. And ironically, Saturn is pretty close to the sun as you start this month. In fact, as February came to a close, Saturn squeezed the sun and there may have been a somber moment around your love life or around uh, your social situation, which you're still trying to work out as you come into this month. The great news, however, is the midpoint between the sun and the moon, which is a critical degree in astrology, the balance of the energy we can expect this month is in Capricorn at 10 degrees. But that links brilliantly to Jupiter in your sector of relating. And for you, Capricorn is the third house. So that's your thinking, how you choose your words, how you express yourself. But it can also be where you're quite fluid and quick thinking. And the conversations you have with people in your everyday world. But that angle to Jupiter suggests that some connection this month could prove to be uh, really very productive, even lucky. Furthermore, the Sun on the 1st is in an exact sextile with Jupiter, one of the best alliances that you can get in astrology. If we want to think of astrology in terms of fortune, that's about as good as it gets really. So if you are someone who's interested in meeting someone new, that's very helpful. It's just the Sun being close to Saturn suggests that whatever or whoever you may be attracted to, whether it's a an idea or a hobby or a talent that you want to take forward or it is around a social interaction or someone you're attracted to, don't be overconfident because the sun in that sextile to Jupiter can kid us into thinking that everything will work perfectly where Saturn's saying just keep a little bit back but then you know that better than most signs because you generally approach things with a great deal of shrewdness. That said, on the 5th, we do have a nodal conjunction with Chiron in the 6th house. If you have been encountering any kind of health problems, you may get some inspiration from something you read or someone's experience or advice, or just start to feel different. There may be an uplift. Also in week two, the sun's developing angle to Uranus in your sector of relating is an exciting uh, uh, aspect. Uranus has been perhaps a little bit um, challenging at times over the last six years. There may have been some stops and starts around your relationships. Maybe things have been exciting one minute, distance the next, a bit maybe unpredictable. 
Um, but this is like the alliance is really good and it feeds into the super new moon of the 10th. So the following month can also be pretty lucky for you if you're open-minded about who you can connect to. Mercury moves, however, on the 10th into the sign of Aries, which, like your sign, is traditionally ruled, well, is ruled in, uh, in totality by Mars. So Mercury moving into the 6th house, if you have been generating some good ideas, Mercury can start to thread it all together, the details, to try to make it work. But the 11th, Venus moving into house 5, you know, that's passion, it's warmth, very sociable, and it is going to go on to forge one of the most prestigious links possible from the 22nd to the 27th with Jupiter. So, you know, that can point towards some real, real serendipity. But at the same time, Venus is also approaching Saturn, and that becomes exact on the 21st. It's one of those aspects that can have a number of outcomes. For example, if you're in a romantic relationship where you don't feel that you can have much fun and enjoyment, Venus's conjunction with Saturn might be the time that you decide to call it quits. On the other hand, it could be when you decide that someone's worthy of investing more in so it becomes a more long-lasting and stable uh, relationship. So it has some different uh, uh, strands. Also, Venus combining to Saturn could see you uh, using your creative talents in, in a more structured way. But that link between Venus and Jupiter, up there with the Sun and Jupiter in terms of good fortune. The 20th um, brings to an end a, a, a few days when the Sun is aligning with Neptune. That uh, period of days from the 14th and the 19th, maybe your energy is going to be a bit lower, but also you can be much more sensitive. But what's critical with that is to use the sensitivity not ignore it so if your instincts are informing you of something then uh, do listen to them the 20th the spring equinox and this is really a very very unique event because this marks the start of the astrological year western tropical astrology is governed by the seasons not by the uh, gregorian calendar or the lunar calendar um, and so what we have is the start of Cardinal Quadrant 1 lasting 13 weeks. But it links to your modern ruler of Pluto in the fourth house. Some big changes could be coming for you um, uh, in the next 13 weeks. And perhaps it is to do with where you live and how you live there. But also on the 22nd, your traditional ruler moves to join with Venus in that very playful fifth house. So it's an interesting month, I feel. That, you know, there can be an opportunity to enjoy yourself, but maybe with a purpose. And certainly the latter part of the month, more practical strands uh, take centre stage. The lunar eclipse, the micro moon of the 25th, occurs in your 12th house, but is also linking to Pluto. 12th, 6th energy, interesting. When it comes to your professional situation, uh, just be conscious of office politics. Sometimes, uh, the way these things work, we're not told what's going on. So someone's, you know, being a bit two-faced or cunning, uh, a bit Machiavellian behind your back. That could be flagged up by this particular lunar eclipse, I'm afraid. So over the next six months, it's very important that you are aware of those potentials, but also. In a more practical sense, I think that what that lunar eclipse is saying to you is, are you at peace with the balance between your physical and, uh, and uh, everyday health and structures with the more psychological and emotional side of your health? If you're someone who has a very holistic approach, you know, you're very much interested in healing, nurture, peacefulness, um, and also personal development, then this uh, lunar eclipse doesn't really hold too many fears, to be honest. But if you're someone who's very much in the physical world and tends to think that all that emotional stuff is for others, then it could be more challenging for you over the next six months. And there may be things to, that you will encounter that could change your outlook somewhat. There is, in the last two days, a link between Jupiter and Uranus, which will become exact on the 21st of April. Some kind of exciting connection, conversation 
which really can be very, very stimulating. It's a lot of fun to be had this month, uh, Scorpio. It is asking you in the latter part of the month to take life and its more everyday routines a bit more seriously, which does sound a bit dull, sorry. Um, but having said that, uh, you're still going to retain Jupiter until the 26th of May in the seventh house of relating, along with Uranus, which is really good. And you've still got Venus and Mars in, in very, very positive areas as this month comes to a close. So even around the everyday stuff, you can still make it enjoyable, but I just think it is important to watch those politics and, and try to approach your overall health in a holistic way as possible.